Hello and welcome to the Girls Who Like Hoops podcast. I'm Tori. Welcome to this week's episode. We have a lot to discuss this week. Um, the WNBA just kicked off everything on Monday and today's Thursday. So I might start posting bi-weekly. We'll see what happens. But if you want to stay up to date on these episodes, follow and uh, subscribe, like, follow me on other platforms so you know when new episodes are out. Do whatever you got to do, okay? But there's probably going to be new episodes every Friday. I want to say around noon, but I be goofing sometimes and um, just know that the episode is going to be there before 11.59, okay? Before Saturday rolls, it's going to be up. But also, I'm about to get laid off my job, so we're actually going to have a lot of time on our hands. So we're going to we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens, but my little computer, she be tired of me with that hour long episode. So I'm going to try to keep it cute and keep it quick. Okay. So, first things first, Monday afternoon, the Golden State Valkyries um released a promotional video and that's the WNBA expansion team for the Golden State. Um they released their like I said promotional video it was narrated by Kaylani and she's a big artist from the Bay and I think it's just really cool that they're already starting off with their promotional video. It looked really high quality. It looked really great. Um, but I love that they're having, they're just making sure that their culture is already in there. You know, it's kind of like getting their brand identity together. They also unveiled their, um, symbols and then they have like the meaning of the symbol and everything and breaking down what everything on the symbol means. So I'm going to be linking all that in the description below. They have merch. I really wanted to buy some of the merch. So honestly, if somebody from the Golden State Valkyries is watching this or listening to this, I'm going to need you to send me, send me some stuff, send me some stuff in the mail because I'm a big Golden State fan. Like it runs in me. I got a hat. I got jerseys in the closet. I'm, I'm a fan. So go ahead and send something over for me. I'm not above begging. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not above begging. So send something over for me, okay? A little care package. Email me. The email's in the, you can find my, DM me. Okay, anyways. But it's really exciting. And I'm excited to see um, how the expansion stuff works. I was hoping that they would get like a number one pick because, you know, they're, they're a new team in the league. But I think some people are saying that when expansion teams are added, they usually get a middle of the pack pick. And um, it just should be interesting, honestly. But yeah, if you're interested in that and you want to see the breakdown and all of that, everything's going to be linked in the description below. Next, um, during that like that same afternoon, Skims released an ad campaign and they are partnering with the WNBA and that was announced last year, but they just did the official like press release campaign situation um, on Monday. And that featured five like top players in the WNBA to me I feel like there are so many top players in the WNBA like it's hard for me to be like the top five because it wasn't the top five but anyways um who was in that Kelsey Plum Candace Parker Cameron Brink Skylar Diggins Smith and Dejanae Carrington were all in that ad and I just thought it was really cool um some of the conversations surrounding it though some people were saying that they wanted to see more darker skinned women in the ads. And I think that's, um, a fair conversation. I think it's important to have those conversations. I feel like a lot of the audience, you know, they want to see themselves in the marketing, you know, because they're sitting there and they're supporting the stuff. And it makes sense to, in order to keep, you know, consumers watching and making sure that they feel, you know, valued it's important to see yourself and stuff and to feel representation from that um I will say some other players individually went and posted about the skims partnership um like Chelsea Gray um Jackie Young Lexi Brown I'm sure some other players as well I didn't see all of them but those were the three that I saw I think it's an important conversation and I'm glad that people on the internet are having it um but those are my thoughts on that anyways Moving on to basketball, which what we're here to talk about. Um, and I want to say this, actually. I didn't, have a, I didn't have many problems with the opening week. My one or two, my one or two, and I get it. I get it. You know, these are just things to work on. You know, like these are just goals for the next year. I get we can't have it all. We can't have it all. I would have liked to see a better camera angle from the um, league pass Liberty versus Mystics game that like the way that the camera was swinging I didn't like that I didn't like that actually 
it made me feel a little nauseous. So I think if we work on that, besides that, I was just really grateful to see the game. So you know what? Let me shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me let me sit here and be grateful. But if that's something that you you know you're wondering, hey, what can we work on and do better? That's that's a part where I think we could do better. Anyways, besides that, I also think I get it. You know, we can't have it all. The LA Sparks and Atlanta Dream Game was lighted pretty atrociously. Like I get it. Sometimes you have to play where you're available, where you can, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that you could see their shadows on the floor, that was a little bit concerning to me, you know, but that's neither here nor there. Those were just two things that I noticed for the week. So getting into Monday, we had four games that night and then there was the NBA games on and I'm not going to lie, my head was hurting bad. I actually had to go back and watch some of these games because I just it was hard to watch them all at the same time so Liberty versus Mystics Liberty won that game 85 to 80 I thought this was a really great showing for like the Mystics for a team that's in like a rebuild in saying that though I will start and talk about who won the game and then we'll move over to them the Liberty won the game but Nigel Laney Hamilton I don't know if you would have won that game without her keeping you in there for the most part. I think that she played a really pivotal role that night. Also, John Quell Jones, amazing night. I think she had 20 that night. She played really well. And I really just feel like she should be talked about more. I know she won MVP like a couple of seasons ago, but what she does for that team, really important. You know, she crashes the board. She gets, she gets her points like... I think she's just a really pivotal part of this team, and I really like to see her talked about more. Brianna Stewart, that game, I would have liked to see her more aggressive. She did other things. You know, she rebounded. She passed the ball. She only had nine points, though, so I think that it's important to see her be more aggressive there. They were still able to pull out the win, but I think you just need her to be a little more aggressive, make sure that she's, you know shooting you know it's really important for her to be in the paint and everything but I think you just the team is better off if she's offensive minded and she's focusing on getting her shots and stuff but she's really great on both sides of the ball so they were able to pull that one out I will say I'm going to get to this later but she was a lot more aggressive in the game against um the Indiana Fever tonight so that was really great and I think that you could definitely see a difference there whereas in this game, it was more of a battle and it was really close, 85 to 80. Like, I really thought the Mystics were going to be able to get back in there, but they weren't able to, but they still played really great. The Mystics, Steph Dolson, she's going to do what she does. She's a gold medalist. Um, she can shoot. She's she's definitely, like, a stretch big. I think she played really well. Aaliyah Edwards had nine points, I believe. She played well. I was happy to see her out there. It might have been nine or six. I don't really remember. But that's neither here nor there. Um, Shakira Austin, she's just like that. She played really great. I thought she was definitely like, she just did a really great job contributing, especially like in a timely fashion. I really enjoyed that. And I think Ariel Adkins, she had some great points. It was, like I said, a tight win. But I think that I'm really liking what I'm seeing from the Mystics so far. And I'm excited to see them. And I hope as they play more in the season, you know, like they're really able to you're just be able to see them gel, but they played really great that game. I think they really held their own, especially considering that the Liberty are a team that was in the finals last year. Like they were really, they stayed in there and I really liked that. I think the Liberty may have, you know, may have just thought, oh, it's just the Mystics. And, you know, they were able to turn it up and again, like make sure that they got the win. But yeah, I think that was a really great game. Fun. It was a little slower paced, but you know, we were there and it went out to the end. They were really competing. So that was really exciting. Next, we have the Storm versus the Lynx. I don't know why I have them in this order, but I just do. Anyways, next we have the Storm versus the Lynx. Um, the Lynx won 83 to 70. <sighs> I'm going to be honest. I I agreed with the coach. The coach at halftime, Noelle Quinn, she definitely said um, we need to just have better shot selection and really that's the only thing that I think you can say they didn't do that that's the reason that they lost the game I also think that they just need more energy especially down the stretch I think they just needed more energy and I think that 
Nika Mule did not play that game. She did not. But I think when she is able to play, she has visa issues. When she is able to play, I think she's going to offer you that energy that you need off the bench. But also, again, it's just going to be really great defense. So I think you're able to... They play fine defense anyway. So it's not really like... It's not that they were playing like super bad. It was just like Joel Lloyd and Skylar Diggins-Smith just needed to be like more efficient and you know just have a better shot selection and I think again like I think this is just like one of those things where I think they just need to play together more like they just got put together some of them and I think once they're able to figure out you know what shots are best for them to take everything's going to start gelling together I think the Storm are going to be a really great team this year it's going to take them a little second to like you know, settle in. But again, I'm really excited for them. But on to the winners of the of the game. Yeah, the Lynx, I'm going to say Courtney Williams. She played really, really great that night. Um, Collier, she played great. And really, the team just was able to pull the win out, you know, and I think they just looked a little bit, they just looked a little bit more together. That's really all you can say there. I wasn't that I wasn't really paying attention to this game for real. I'm going to be so honest. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be really real. I started seeing it was really close for the longest time until like the fourth quarter. And there was a lot of separation there just based off of shot selection. But again, I think if you have some energy coming, more energy coming off the bench, I think, I don't know if you win this one for sure, for sure. But I think that you, the, the score is a little bit tighter. I mean, it was only, they only lost by 13. So it's not even that serious, but Again, I think they just need to play some more and they're going to be great. It's going to be fine. Um, Now on to what people, um, the hot button conversation, if you will. Fever versus Suns. I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. Um, The Fever lost to the Suns 92 to 71. I think it's important to put this. I think it's important to put the Suns win. The Sun, not Suns, but like the Sun. I think it's important to put the Connecticut Sun win in context this is a team that has been to the semifinals last season right they played against the new york liberty they're a highly rated defensive team they've played some of these players have played together for some time this is a great team like this is this is a great team and I, there's nothing more to say than that. Like, this is a really great team, whereas you have the Indiana Fever who have two first-round picks, and that tells you everything you need to know. Like, to get a first-round pick, you have to be bottom of the barrel standings, you know? You have to be last to get that number one pick, and they've gotten it two two seasons in a row, so that paints the picture for you. Really great sons, veteran team, great defensively, can shoot the ball, and then you have whatever that is, okay? Yes. So let's start. It was a rough first half. It was. It was a rough first half. Um, the Suns, Bigs, they were just getting everything they wanted. I don't think that there's too much more to say. Like the Suns are the Sun are a big team. They are. They're big. And even back when John Paul Jones was in there. Just a big team. They were getting everything they wanted. The team was making some questionable passes in the paint, and I'm referring to the Indiana Fever. They were making some questionable passes because there were a couple... They had 25 turnovers as a team. Like, I know that people are kind of pointing to Caitlin as, oh, you had 10. Now, okay, she did have 10, but there were still 15 other turnovers from the rest of the team. So I think that when you... And it's just like, this was her first game too. So again, I'm not really putting too much of like expectations for her to play perfectly. Like it's fine. Like she's a rookie. She's learning. She's growing. There were just some questionable passes into the paint, especially some to Aaliyah Boston. I think there was one I saw. It was a turnover and they were like trying to pass it to her in transition. And she wasn't even like in position yet. Like when it comes to a big team like the Sun, I think you need to be able to dish it to Aaliyah Boston. But when she's like in position and it can post up, like, you know, can start backing someone down. 
not she's running in transition and there's three defenders basically hovering around her and you try to make that pass that's not I don't know what that was but that was not a great pass it was it was a an error that I saw throughout some of the game um I also thought like I said the sun are big and physical and at the end of the day you know you have Dewana Bonner who's super long can shoot the ball and moved up on the all-time scorers list. Like, she's the top five scorer of the WNBA. Like, I don't really know. Like, I am I saw a lot of people talking about how the Fever should have done this and that and how it was Aaliyah's fault and all of these things. And it just is completely diminishing the fact that this is... The Sun are a top-rated team. Like, there's nothing more to say. Like, they have Alyssa Thomas, who got a triple-double, I believe, that game. They have Dewana Bonner, who's long, plays defense, can shoot the ball, obviously. They have a big center. Like, everybody on that team is tall. Like, everybody on that team is big. Like, I don't know. And they play defense. Like, DeJanae Carrington was playing some hard defense on Caitlin before she had to leave. Um, and it's just like, I don't really... People are really not, people are expecting a lot of the Indiana Fever just because they have two number one picks. Like those two number one picks have, they just, one of them just started playing last year and the other one just started that night for real. So it's kind of like, I don't love the expectations that are like these super high expectations that are being set for them. Like you need time to learn stuff. And I feel like people aren't giving them that. That was... Anyways, second half adjustments. There weren't really any adjustments for real. Like, Caitlin Clark, she had the 10 turnovers, but she had 20 points. You know, she went to the free throw line. She was able to, and that's what I did like about her game as the game continued. You know, at first she wasn't getting, she was in foul trouble. She was in foul trouble. And I think as the game went on, I think she was able to settle in and she was able to drive to the paint. They were playing very physical basketball, but that's just the WNBA, honestly. Like, And I think at the end of the day, you just kind of have to realize that there's not all of these teams, because there's 12 of them, all have stars, multiple stars on their team. And for the most part, nobody's going to just let the Indiana Fever come in and show them up. And not only that, but I feel like, and this is a, like, this is not Caitlin's fault, but the way that fans and the media and the commentators and a lot of people talk about Caitlin, they just like put this target on her back and they just like the target's already there because it's always, it's always going to be welcome to the league rookie. Like it's always going to be that it's never not going to be that. But I think also always talking about how great she is in these really high expectations that you have for her because she was great in college. These expectations, they make that like, and the way that people talk about her, it makes that target on her back much bigger. And so when she has games like this, it's like the immediate thing that people are going to do is talk about how she didn't do something right. Or even like I was just saying, nobody's going to let, her come into the game and show them up. Like nobody's going to let that happen. It's not like when you think about things like that, instead of like thinking, Oh, this player did this and this person didn't do that. And blah, 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 blah. Doesn't make a difference. Nobody's letting nobody who is a star on a team or even not even a star on the team. Nobody's letting that girl come in here and show them up. Like, you're not about to sit here and drop 35 on me. You're not about to sit here and drop 30 on me. Like, I will say that she is being, like, defended very well. Like, people, they are, the rotation on that, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Nobody's letting her come in there and show them up. And I think that that's really great. I think that says a lot about the WNBA that, you know, welcome to the league. Like, you know, you're going to have to earn this. Like, you're going to have to figure it out and you're going to have to beat me in different ways. Like you're not just going to be able to shoot. You're going to have to beat me. And I like that challenge. I like that challenge for her. I like that challenge for any rookie, but I really like that. And I'm happy that people are seeing that. And I hope that that's what gets elevated here 
instead of like just saying about just talk people talking about how she isn't doing this or that or how um some people on the team aren't helping her this that and the third don't have time for that conversation because a lot of people who are saying that and all and have never mind girl we're gonna we'll, we'll get there um caitlin definitely um like i said those 10 turnovers but she had 20 points so she was getting to the line especially in the second half I've always said I agree with Cheryl Swoops in terms of it's going to be an adjustment. But I think as fans of the game, like me or like maybe you or somebody who's a casual viewer, somebody who's been watching the WNBA for a long time, I think as fans of the game, like you just give her grace on those 10 turnovers, like, and you give her time to learn. Like the same way, like this was expected from people who have been playing the game or have played the game or have been watching for years. Like Cheryl Swoop said, it's going to be an adjustment. She's not going to come in there and just be, this is grown women's basketball. And she wasn't not correct. You give her grace and you give her time to learn. That's it. Point blank period. And even Diana, like I said, she said, greatness translates still going to take time to get to that point though. Like welcome to the league. 10 turnovers. People are not going to be easy on you. They're going to challenge you to be better. If you want to score this ball, you're going to have to beat me. And I think that that's important. That's a part of the, like, that's a part of competition. And I think as she, like, I think that people challenging her and testing her in this way is going to make her an even better player than she would be if people just went and gave her easy shots, right? Nobody wants to see somebody just going out there and just shooting. That's like watching, like, the NBA All-Star game. Ain't nobody trying to see that boring basketball nobody just wants to see people go up and down and shoot nobody wants to see all that we want to see people compete we want to see a tight game and that's what we're getting from here well maybe not a tight game but we're getting competitiveness and I like that um also I think it's just important to remember that this is just her first game um I think what I've noticed a lot from watching the WNBA and then just watching a lot of the games a lot of star players just have a mid-range like, I don't really know if there's a player out there who doesn't have a mid-range. A lot of players do drive to the bucket, yes. But they're also not super-duper reliant on threes. Again, that's something that, you know, people like Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell. Like, that's something that they've normalized. And Caitlin Clark is kind of kind of bringing that to the WNBA, bringing that style but at the end of the day, a lot of people are mostly shooting mid-range jumpers. They're driving to the rim. They're driving in the paint. It's like she's just going to have to develop a mid-range or else people are just going to keep capitalizing on the things, on her weaknesses. And I think some people said she can't go, she can't go right. She can't go left. I don't know which way she can't go. I really don't care about all that. I think she's just going to need time to develop and I did, like I said before, I liked her driving in the paint for the contact in the second half. And I think getting to the free throw line is a good way to get your game going. So I did like that. Um, She really did settle in and I think she's going to get it eventually, you know. Um, It just may not look like the version of the game that she played in college. You know, you do have to adjust, you do have to learn. And even her coach said they're kind of trying to break her from certain habits that she's had in college so I you know I think everything's gonna be fine she's gonna be great anywho next we let's I'm scrolling I'm scrolling oh yeah I think I also noticed in that game when I was looking at the box score that the Sun had five players shooting 50% or better and in order to beat that team your defense cannot allow for five players to be shooting 50% or better but it, you also have to be able to match that. Like if you're going to go bucket for bucket instead, instead of getting a stop, you're going to have to be able to, you're going to need multiple people shooting 50% or better. And that's just not what was happening there. I think there were two people who had double digits in that game. Like they're just going to need to be more there. And that's like what every single team in the WNBA feels like or seems to have, that they have multiple people who are able to come in and give you... 10 plus. Anyways, I thought Nalissa Smith, um, she was the only other person who had a double figure. Sorry. Nalissa Smith was the only other person on the floor who had double figures. And like I said, that just can't be 
that's not going to be enough, especially like with how the league is going right now. Like a lot of these teams have multiple people who can go and give you double digits. Like that's not going to cut it. I think somebody, I don't remember which team it was, but somebody had four or five people with double digits that, like I said, you're going to need more than just two people having double digits. You're also going to need them to be super efficient or you're going to need other people to contribute to the offensive end. But in terms of the conversation around this game, I saw a lot of people talking about how Aaliyah Boston looks slow and can't catch the ball. And to that, I'll say, I don't think that she was getting the best passes 100% of the time or even 90% of the time. So I think blaming her for turnovers or the game not going very well, like it takes more than just one person for a game to like to lose a game. Like it's going to take a lot more than that. Like it takes, that's a team effort as well. So I think just blaming it on her is not particularly fair. Some of the passes that I saw, like I said at the beginning, um, that turned into turnovers were just like the ball being forced to her when she wasn't at a spot yet. And I thought like the blame on only her was kind of messed up. But also, I think it's important that incoming fans know their personnel. Like, the Connecticut Sun were in the semifinals last year, like I said. They're a top-rated defense, which you saw that night. Alyssa Thomas was in the MVP race last year. Dewana Bonner is the top five all-time scoring list. The team isn't just a bunch of slouches. Like, And I think to like the Iowa fans that I was seeing on Twitter the next day after the game, there were some people who were talking about and tweeting that Hannah Stolke would have been right where Caitlin needed her to be. And she would have done this, that, and the third. And this is why Aaliyah Boston is da, 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 da. And again, like you just have to know your personnel because I think a lot of the Iowa fans who are coming in, watching the game for the first time, like low key y'all are living in a state of delusion because I don't care who you had at the five that night. It wouldn't have mattered because the Sun were not losing that game. Like, this is a like this is one of the best teams in the league. Semifinals last year against the New York Liberty. Like, this team, no, it doesn't matter who was at the five. I'm sorry. You could have had Shaquille O'Neal at the five. Okay, well, not too much. Yeah, if you had Shaquille O'Neal at his age now at the five, it doesn't matter. Like, it didn't matter who you had out there. Like, they weren't winning that game anyways. Like, there were there were, there were problems outside of just bad passes or her not being fast or her not being aggressive or whatever. I think I saw some people talking about how she wasn't rebounding very well. Y'all are looking for a lot. Like y'all are looking for one person to blame this on. And it takes more than just one person to lose a game because if she were really the problem, when she was taken out of the game and um, for rest, y'all would have seen a big jump in the score and that just never happened so again I think I would really like some of the newer fans like take a step back a little bit and just like watch the game consume it it's not just gonna look like college basketball because it's not college basketball like there are a lot of different factors here the players are bigger the players are better defenders like you don't stay in the WNBA playing like your college level so I just really hope that people give not only Caitlin Grace, but give the entire team grace. It's going to take some time to figure it out. They need to play together more. There are more problems than just the shooting or turnovers or whatever. Like they just need to play together, gel and figure it out. It'll be fine at some point. Not like right now, but like, it'll be fine. I think by the second half of the season, Caitlin's going to look fine. Um, I don't think there's anything more to say there. Caitlin's going to be fine by the second half of the season. Next, we have the Mercury versus Aces. The Aces won 89 to 80. <sighs> that was a rough game to watch. I'm not going to lie. First of all, it was Aces ring night. I'm definitely putting a picture on the side. Yes, Aces ring night. Aces ring night. Also, if anybody's listening from the Las Vegas Aces, like, send me merch. Like, send me merch. I'm Send me merch. Honestly, send me a ring if you got the money. You know, they won't send me a ring. But, like... Send me, like, a jersey or something. I'll take anybody's jersey, really. I would prefer, like, a Kelsey Plum, Asia Wilson, Jackie Young, Chelsea Gray. You know what I'm saying? But I'll t- I'll accept. I'll accept anything. Honestly, it's Sydney Colson if if you came across this video. Like, 
tell everybody I said hi. Anyways, but um, it was ring night. I thought that was super fun. Chelsea Gray is out for the Aces, and she's their point guard, also referred to as the point god. So that tells you everything you need to know there. Um, so Kelsey Plum and Jackie Young. I think Jackie was mostly running the point, but oh, Kelsey had the ball. Eh, anyways, those two are mostly running the point, and I think um, Asia had said during halftime that they just kind of really needed to step it up. This was a really close game throughout the entirety of it. Um, Asia ended up saying that, you know, during the timeout, she had told them that, you know, she's just going to need to see more from them. Like, you know, we can't let our foot off the gas. She really wants that third ring. She wants to do that three-peat, and I really believe this team can do that. Um I think they're going to have to figure out, they're just going to have to like, you know, work on some things, uh, get the reps up, you know, in terms of like the point guard situation. But I think the team looks fine. Like Asia said, I think you just have to keep your foot on the gas and not get complacent with, you know, thinking that it's going to be easy. Like the target on their back is big trying to go for that three P and there are some really great teams that are in the league that I've watched over the past few days. And it's going to be tough to get that third one, but I think they can do it. Asia finished the game with 30 and 13. She was looking amazing out there. And that's the reason she's a two-time MVP. Like, I mean, what more can you say? Jackie Young had 23, seven and six. She finished the game very well. Kelsey Plum um, gave some offensive lift with 19 points. And I think they just did a really great job, but that's not to say that the Mercury did not play well because I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous for them. Like I said before, this Mercury team is, they're they're serious. Like they have Diana Taurasi, Kali Copper, um, Natasha Cloud, and then they have... Brittany Griner, when she comes back, she's not playing right now. Um, they have Sophie Cunningham, and they have just some really great players. And it's gonna take a lot, but I'm. It's gonna take a lot for the Aces to get over, like to get to that third championship. But I believe they can do. It, like I said, but the Mercury is definitely gonna be a team in their way. I think the Mercury had some miscommunication issues, especially like in the first half and a little bit in the third quarter. Um, they had like four people, I think, in double figures. So like I said, like that team is going to be like a team to watch, especially as the season goes on and they start to gel and they start figuring things out. But I think they're going to get it together as the season goes on. And them closing the gap in the second quarter was really great. I, like I said, I was really I was on the edge of my seat for this game because I thought they were going to pull that win out. But it's just going to be an interesting season, especially for um, between those two teams but in general with the Mercury they have a lot to offer and um, it's just gonna be really great so I'm excited to see that all right so Wednesday we had the Sky versus Wings and then we had the Dream versus the Sparks I fell asleep that day because I was so tired but luckily with the WNBA League Pass you can go back and watch the games and not only that they have some amazing highlights over there as well so if you don't already have a WNBA League Pass Go and buy it so you can watch all the games. Well, most of the games and not not too much. Okay. Um, so first game we had on Wednesday was the Sky versus Wings. The Wings won 87 to 79. Um, I think that was a really great game. It was very exciting, mostly because the Sky was winning for a lot of it. But the Wings were able to pull it out um in the fourth quarter. Um Arike Agumbawale, she was not playing that great in the first three quarters like she was passing and you know she was doing what she needed to do but the shots weren't really falling and then in the fourth quarter she was just it's like a switch flipped and she was able to really pull it out make sure that they got the win oh she was really able to pull it out and make sure that they got the win so that was really cool but for the sky they had multiple starters and double figures Angel Reese was not that aggressive at the beginning, but by the fourth quarter, she got a little more aggressive, and I think she played pretty well for her first game. I think um, Camila Cardoza being able to play, and when she comes back, that's going to be like, it's just going to be better just because like they kind of look like the smaller team last night, but I think once they have their pieces, I'm going to be excited to see like what everything looks like, but Mostly, I think the Sky just got beat on rebounds and then they weren't able to get stops when the Dallas Wings started coming back in the fourth quarter. But outside of that, I think the Sky played really well. Um, what I did like was that there was a lotto interview 
And she was actually super funny for that interview. You know, she ended up saying like, the interviewer was just asking her why she was there. And she was like, you know, I want to see Angel. And, you know, everybody else is going to come later. But I want people to know that I did it first. And this is the year of the woman. Tap in or tap out. Really love that. I also love that Cheryl Swoops is the commentator for the Dallas Wings this season. I think it's really cool. And that other white man. Um, but Marina Mabry for the sky, she was playing really great. Like, she was shooting the ball. Apparently, she used to be a Dallas Wings player. But she was really great last night. Um, and I think she's like literally like one of the only reasons that they were still in the game. Kennedy Carter, who plays for the Sky, she played really great defense in the first half. I think she came back in the second half as well. She was out after she had gotten hit in the face, I believe, by Natasha, by Natasha Howard. But she played really great defense for the Wings. I'm glad that they didn't settle for too many threes. They were 3-12 three and 12 at the beginning of the fourth quarter and... I think some of the younger players like J.C. Sheldon, I think when she came into the game, she really like had a lot of energy and she just did a good job, like, you know, pressuring um, some of the people on offense. So that was really nice to see. Also, Maddie Segrist, she really brought a lot of energy and also she was just like. She was just really great in the paint. She was getting rebounds. She was getting, um, she was really helping them get second chance points. I think she played really great. And honestly, I'm really excited to see her play throughout the rest of the season. Without Maddie and uh, Tierra McCowan defending the rim and Natasha Howard staying active on defense as well, I think, and making close those close shots because her threes weren't really falling, but... Without those three playing as great as they did, I don't know if you're able to stay in the game and, you know, have time or have room to come back in the fourth quarter. So that was really, I just really liked the way that the team played together. And I like their coach. Coach Trammell, she's, if anybody is working for the Dallas Wings, girl, send me the merch. I'm a fan. I'm a fan now. Anyways, but they played really great. Um... Their starting point guard, I'm not going to say her name because I'm going to butcher it, but I liked her playing the point. You know, she kept the ball moving. Um, I hope to see her getting some assistance stuff as the season goes on, but everybody on the team is so unselfish that I think um, she can kind of focus on. She hit like th- two threes or something like that, but, you know, I liked her at the point, and I think she had like a lot of energy, and she really stayed on her, she stayed on her like, person to defend like she she ate that I'm excited to see her play with this team as well and it was just a really exciting game so yeah that was a really great game if you're looking for like a team that you want to like root for and you're trying to see something good definitely the Dallas Wings if you're not into the aces or you don't want to believe the hype of like the Liberty or some other people definitely the Dallas Wings are definitely going to be a team to watch this season next we have the dream versus the Sparks Girl, I don't know how the Dream won this game, and I don't even on no haters. I almost cussed. Not even on no hater stuff for real. They um won the game ninety two to eighty one. For the Dream, you know, you have Tina Charles. She put up twenty one and fourteen. Which who can be mad at that? Like she played really great. Ryan Howard had twenty five. Um, and then you know you have Haley Jones and. Alicia Gray giving you 14 points and 12. I don't remember who had what, but they gave you that. And so that was really important. Good lift to the team. You know, you have four people giving you double digits and they played really hard. The Sparks, they they hung around in there. I they hung around really until like the fourth quarter. And then like there there started to be like a gap in the little score there. But Cameron Brink had a pretty good debut game as well as uh rakia jackson rakia i think she definitely started like waking up a little bit she was a little more active a little more aggressive in the fourth quarter um but both of them i'm excited to see like what their progression throughout the season looks like but kia nurse kia nurse was in there cooking i never really seen kia nurse play for real because i think when i started like heavily heavily watching she was out with the acl injury but and also I told y'all a couple episodes ago I don't I don't be paying attention to the Sparks were like that. But Kia Nurse played really great. She had twenty three points, and I don't know she just looked really great. Like I'm, <laughs> the team looks good. I think if um the rookies are able to you know join her 
in um you know putting up some good points making sure that she that you know they're getting some second chance points they're able to rebound i think and they're also like a very unselfish team that was like the thing that i really noticed about that team dierica hamby she gave you 20 and 14 she was out there playing her little heart out and was and again i told you guys she used to play for the vegas aces and some stuff happened um some background stuff happened and I'm happy that she's on a different team. I think they said last year she didn't play that great. But, she, you know, she made sure to go to tell their coach, Kurt Miller, that, hey, how I played and how I looked last season, you're not going to see that player this year. And I'm, I'm going to play. I'm going to play better. And she did just that. Like, 20 and 14, she did amazing. Like I said, she really kept them in the game. She was playing great defense. She was making sure. She was just just a very unselfish team and I think that that's gonna get them like pretty far this season just being able to pass well like I said like they really they really had stuck around in there until like the fourth quarter Lexi Brown she was shooting pretty well and I'm just excited for that team a little bit I want to believe in the dream so bad but because I live in Atlanta and because I know that Atlanta teams just struggle so heavily. I just don't really believe that. um, I don't really know if I believe they'll ever be great. Like I will be pleasantly surprised if they are. But as of right now, I won't hold my breath. Um, I think if you, I think if Cameron Brink gives you a couple more points throughout the game, but this is just her first game, so it really doesn't matter. But if Cameron Brink can give you more points, if Rakia Jackson can give you more points, if Zaya Cook can give you more points, you don't win that. The Dream doesn't win that game, I fear. But, you know, the Dream did win this one. And I'm going to stop being a hater because I did apply for that Atlanta Dream job. And so I'm not trying to get nasty if, if somebody still wants to hire me. Like, I'm not trying to get nasty. I just, I'm just speaking my truth. I'm just speaking my truth. Anyways, but yeah, that was a pretty decent game. I rewatched that one today before I came home while I was at work. And they played some decent basketball. You know, like I said, the lighting on that court was absolutely atrocious. But I think the Sparks have something this season. I think they're gonna be um they're gonna be like a like a they're gonna be like an underdog team, I think. But I'm excited to see what they're able to put together this season. It should be interesting. Now on to today's game. Now on to Thursday's game. We have the Liberty versus the Fever. The Liberty won 102 to 66. I don't really know. I don't really know what more there is to say. You know what I'm saying? Brianna Stewart was super aggressive this game. That was my one critique of her from Monday's game. I really just wanted to see her go out there and be a little more aggressive. And she did just that. In this game, she had 31 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. I thought, like, I really just think, like, this team is the at its best when Brianna Stewart is being aggressive offensively and when John Paul Jones is able to contribute and when Sabrina, I think Sabrina gave you 14. Yeah, Sabrina gave you 14. John Paul Jones gave you 14. Benajah Laney Hamilton gave you 12. And she's the reason that they even really stuck around on that game on Monday. I think I really just want to see Courtney Vandersloot. I would like to see her shot start falling. Um, but outside of that, I think the team is good. I think they have the potential to do big things like they did last year. I think it should really be interesting. I think really just Brianna Stewart and John, and John Paul Jones, like giving you double is always going to be helpful. And obviously Sabrina, I think, I think as the season goes on, she's going to be contributing a little bit more, but 14 for this game. And I think she had like, she didn't have that many points in the, in their game on Monday. But again, as the season goes on, I think she's going to like knock the cobwebs off and, you know, get going a little bit more. I hope the same for Courtney Vandersloot. I think they really need her, you know, and obviously she's gonna, you know, facilitate and create for others and stuff, but I hope her shot starts falling, um, because she is a good player, and when her shot is falling, she looks really great, so, you know, not too much on her, but I think the last thing I want to say, um, when I was watching that Liberty versus Fever game, and I had noticed this on Monday, it's really hard for me to take some of these commentators for the game seriously, which is really confusing to me because they've been commentating on the game for years. 
I just think it is just like super duper disappointing to like be watching a game and while you're watching the game, you're hearing the commentators talk about how grateful like the veteran players should be that Caitlin Clark has brought in new viewers. Here's the thing. I don't hate Caitlin Clark. I don't have, I have no notes, honestly. Like I think She's going to, she has the potential to be a great player in the WNBA. I think, I wish that people, I think what's happening with her on social media feels like, I, I really feel for her in terms of like a lot of players, not all, but a lot of players get the grace and time to make mistakes and grow and learn And I just kind of hate that there are so many people who like, and even like the media, like aren't really giving her a chance to do that. I, I, like I said, I'm super grateful. Like, I think the commentator said that she's like a disruptor for the WNBA. Like she is bringing a lot of eyes and what she, what they said was these players should be really grateful to her. And I just really thought that was really fucked up thing to say. I don't know. I thought it was really fucked up thing to say. Like, it's like I said, it's just, it's not even that I'm, I'm more so upset that like a lot of the vets aren't getting the credit that they deserve for doing what they've done for the game. And that's not on Caitlin. Like she definitely talks about the greats of the game. I just, I just hate the way that like she's talked about like the media framing of Caitlin Clark. It's terrible. It's terrible. And I'm just so disappointed in some of these commentators because Even throughout the first game of the season, like during the um, Fever versus, who did they play? During the Fever versus Sun game, they were, like a lot of the commentators were just talking about Caitlyn and how she was in foul trouble and they had the camera on her and they were talking about how she hasn't had any points yet and how all of these things. And it's like, y'all literally have somebody on the court in Dewana Bonner who's about to be on the top five scoring list of the WNBA. And that didn't get mentioned until like a couple, like maybe a minute or three before she shot the shot that put her in the top five. Like I was really disappointed in that. Like I'm a little disappointed and it's not all the commentators, but the ones for those two Indiana games, I'm really disappointed in that. I'm really disappointed. Like, I'm expecting more from these commentators. They've been around the game for many years. And yes, I think it's important to acknowledge, like, Caitlin and stuff and what she's done. But it's also, like, there are other people on the floor. There's an actual game being played. We don't really need you harping on the fact that Caitlin has XYZ turnovers and fouls when she's sitting on the bench. That's something you say when she first goes to the bench, but you leave it at that. Like, there's there's a game going on on the court. Like... I'm I'm very disappointed and it's very hard to take these commentators seriously because, and that goes for like the NBA too, sometimes too. Like sometimes these commentators just be yapping. Girl, I'm not trying to hear all that. I'm not here for all that. I'm here for you to talk about the game and the players on the court. I'm here for you to talk about how great they are, where they're slipping up, some of their weaknesses right now. I'm not here to sit here and listen to you yap about how great this one player is and what they've done in this game. I would like to hear about what the people on the court are doing. That's what you're here to do. You're here to commentate on the people on the floor. Very unserious. And I was honestly very, I was very disturbed by that. And like I said, it wasn't like all of the commentators for those games. It was like two of them and, or maybe it was like the team of them. But like I said, I think that was very disappointing for me to hear and see. And ain't nobody trying to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on that, girl. Shut up and talk about this game. That's what we want. Shut up and talk about the game. Don't nobody want to hear all that. Your personal opinion. She has just done so much. Girl, shut up and talk about the damn game. We did not have time for all that. But um, that's it for this week's episode. Maybe I'll post again on Monday. I'm going to be honest with you. Probably not. But I'm going to be back Friday, though. I'm going to be back Friday. And I appreciate you guys listening to what I had to say this week. Um, hope it was entertaining. If not, I'm so sorry. Um, oh, I was going to tell you guys when the next games are and where they'll be at. So we there's a game 
tomorrow, well, today, because it's Friday when I'm putting this, but um, on Friday there are two games. It's going to be the Mystics versus the Sun, and then it's going to be the Storm versus the Lynx again at 9.30. Both of those games are going to be on Ion, um, and it also says League Pass, but I, I don't really know how that works. Anyways, but you got two options. Then on Saturday, there's going to be four games. My God, my eyes are going to be falling out of my head. Um, on Saturday, the Fever are playing the Liberty again. We already know how that's going to go. That's going to be on ABC. The Sparks are going to be playing the Aces. That'll also be on ABC. Um, the Fever game is at 1. The Vegas game is at 3. And then at 8 p.m., we have the Sky versus the Wings. That's going to be on NBA TV and League Pass. And at 10 p.m., there's going to be a dream game um, versus the Phoenix Mercury. That's going to be on NBA TV and League Pass. Unless you live in the area, then it's going to be, like, on a local station. And that goes for all of these games. Um, And then on Sunday, dang, when do we rest? Okay, on Sunday, I might have to post on Monday because there's too many games. Oh, my God. This is a nightmare. Sunday, there's one game at 3 p.m. It's going to be on League Pass. It's going to be the Storm versus the Mystics. I hope Nika's able to play so she can play against um, Aaliyah Edwards. That would be really cute. That's at 3 p.m. And then on Monday, Jesus Christ, on Monday um, at 7 p.m., it's going to be the Fever versus the Sun. Oh, my God. They're going to get cooked again. Um, and then at seven, also, there's a Storm versus Liberty game. I don't want to see that, I fear. That's going to be on ESPN3, and it's also going to be on League Pass. And I'm assuming that's probably, that's probably going to be on Disney Plus as well. I don't know. We'll see. But Tuesday, oh my god, there's so many games. On Tuesday, there's going to be at 7.30 p.m., it's going to be Wings versus The Dream, Phoenix versus Aces again. Um, I don't know why I'm acting like there's not 12 teams in the league. Like there's only so much you can do. There's only so many combinations. And then at 10 p.m. also, there's going to be a Mystics versus Sparks game. Then on Wednesday, we're going to have a Fever versus Storm game. That should be interesting. That'll be on League Pass. All the past ones I've mentioned are giving League Pass. Um, on Thursday... There's going to be a Lynx versus Sun game. And then at 7, that's the 7 o'clock one. And then at 7, that's also going to be the Sky versus Liberty game. And that's going to be on Amazon Prime. And at 10, it's going to be a Mystics, a Mystics versus Phoenix game. And that day, y'all are only going to hear about one of them games, I fear. Because if I have to come on here and record, I'm going to have to go watch that. I'm going to have to go watch two of them back later. So... That's it for until the next episode. (sighs) I have so much work to do. Oh my God. Anyways, like and subscribe. Follow me on whatever you're listening to this on to stay up to date on the episodes. I'm going to see you guys next week. We're clocking in at 56 minutes. So this was really cool. Really awesome. Get in the comments. Talk about stuff. If you're excited about the new Golden State team. If you have thoughts on the Skims campaign. Um any opening, any thoughts you have on the games that happened this week. I might be back Monday. Probably not, but damn, I should. But um, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm going to catch you guys next week. Bye. Yeah, I'm in a version of hell.